and welcome to the Sovereign Center here in Reading, Pennsylvania, where tonight, undisputed middleweight champion Bernard Hopkins will perform in front of a partisan crowd as he takes on top-ranked contender Carl Daniels. But the action will not stop here on this special edition of World Championship Boxing. We will send it live to Miami where undisputed light heavyweight Roy Jones will take on Australian Glenn Kelly. You know, there are so many interesting storylines that surround this showcase. Hopkins has a chance to set the record for most successful middleweight title defenses. Also, which of these two fighters belongs at the top of boxing's pound-for-pound -pound lists? And will their performance tonight have anything to do with their position? Most importantly, though, are these two fighters riding on a crash course that will collide later this year? Larry Merchant, George Foreman, and myself are here in Reading, Pennsylvania to watch Bernard Hopkins. For more on Roy Jones, let's send it now to Miami and Jim Lampley. All right, friend, thank you very much. As soon as your fight is finished in Reading, we'll bring the audience live here to the American Airlines Arena in Miami to see what Roy Jones does with his latest defense of the light heavyweight championship. And Emmanuel Stewart, if the underlying possibility here is that both undisputed champions get the business done tonight and move forward toward a fight with each other, and given the fact that negotiations for such a fight broke down last year, even before Hopkins blew his star up by winning the 
middleweight tournament and knocking out Felix Trinidad, what real business chance is there that the fight is going to take place in the near future? I think it's a very good chance that the fight will take place. Speaking to Roy yesterday, he seems to be moving more surprisingly towards former fight Mitchell Shevsky, possibly in Germany if certain conditions are met, which probably won't be. But I think based on the way that the movement is going right now and him coming in at 172, I think you're going to see a fight between Hopkins and Roy later on. Probably this year, and it's going to be a very good fight. Now, Roy Jones asserted to us yesterday, Emmanuel, that the fight could never take place unless he gets the lion's share of the money. Hopkins, also an undisputed champion, is a very proud man. How's that going to get cleared up? I think that Roy will get more of the money, and he deserves it. He's been a star, really, since the 88 Olympics. He's been a brilliant star, and it's unfortunate he's beaten all of the top light heavyweights for the most part out there, and he's fighting fighters who are not up to the caliber that we would like to see. But nevertheless, he deserves that, and I think it's going to be a good fight because even though Roy won the first fight, he really didn't beat him. And a lot of things have changed. Roy said he had his right hand hurt when he fought. Hopkins had very little experience, never been to any Olympics or anything. He was nervous. If they fight again, it would be like a brand new fight altogether. And Hopkins is a star himself now. So those are the overall big stakes in the evening. The smaller stakes, both fighters trying to defend their undisputed titles and maintain their star quality images in the sport. Once again, we'll be here in Miami for Jones against Kelly. As soon as you're finished watching the fight in Reading, let's go back to Fran Charles. All right, Jim, you know, for years, the loquacious Bernard Hopkins has been willing to tell anyone and everyone willing to listen that he is one of the best middleweights of all times. Now, the business of boxing has been rough on Bernard, but he's persevered. Hopkins no longer fights in the shadows. Now he stands in the spotlight. And after tonight, his name could go down in the record books. With a victory over Carl Daniels, Bernard Hopkins establishes himself as one of, if not the, greatest middleweight of all time. A win gives him a record 15 successful middleweight title defenses. Nobody has more. Not Stanley Ketchum, Marvel's Marvin Hagler, or Carlos Monzo. It all started when Hopkins defeated Segundo Mercado for the vacant middleweight title in April of 1995. boxing analyst and former heavyweight champion George Foreman. George, a lot on Bernard Hopkins' plate tonight. He's thinking about breaking Carlos Monzon's record. Also, he's fighting in his home state. Is it too much for Bernard to be thinking about coming into a fight with Paul Daniels? I think this is the best way to catch some of these tough fighters. Catch them kind of riding on an emotional high since the turn of that fight. Not thinking about he's going against someone who may beat him. This is the only way you can beat a Bernard Hopkins. Let me tell you, but he needs something like a record to chase to make it keep motivated. Maybe this motivation, uh, motivation position will keep him high. And that's what he needs tonight, to be high. And Daniels is a pesky southpaw. All right, let's bring in HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. And Larry, over the past 12 months, we've seen Prince Nassim Hamed, Lennox Lewis, Felix Trinidad, Shane Mosley, all upset, not to mention Mike Tyson being KO'd by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Can Carl Daniels do to Bernard Hopkins what Bernard Hopkins did to Felix Trinidad? Let me use a uh, Pennsylvania Dutch proverb, this being Pennsylvania Dutch company, country. When you dig a ditch for someone else, you may fall in. Carl Daniels is a long, long shot. 
What he has to do is use his very aggravating style as a southpaw to aggravate Bernard Hopkins into fouling and disqualifying himself. Tie him up in pretzels. Redding pretzels. They make a lot of pretzels in Redding. Also, to perhaps use one of these Pennsylvania Dutch hexes. These hexes are decorate barns all over the region. They used to be used to drive off the demons or just bad dudes like Bernard Hopkins. This one is for luck. Good luck. Double good luck, in fact. So, what Daniels needs are pretzels, hexes, and mixing some punches with them. Absolutely, Larry, and some good luck as well. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this middleweight championship bout between Carl Daniels and Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins, six years older than Daniels. Hopkins enjoying the height and reach advantage. The first weigh-in number that you see came yesterday at 6 p.m., both fighters making the 160-pound weight limit. And then the second number you see was this morning at 9.30 a.m and both fighters gaining just a couple of pounds. All right, now for the rules of the bout, let's send it over to our unofficial ringside scorer, the recently retired longtime judge, Arthur McCanty Sr. The unified rules are there are no three knockdowns in any given round. Only the referee can stop a fight. The scorecard's after four rounds, which that means that they go to the scorecard if the fight is stopped after four rounds. And you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last round. All right, Arthur. And now it's time to meet the challenge of Carl Daniels. Daniels has been in the fighting game for a long time. Over 13 years, he started out as a junior Walter He's a former junior middleweight champion, a pesky southpaw, and he says he's game tonight. But Carl Daniels is making $125,000 tonight, roughly 4% of Bernard Hopkins' $2.8 million. A scandalously low figure. His manager says that he had a handshake agreement with Don King for $800,000. The next thing that he knew, the fight went to a mandatory purse bid, which the manager says was rigged, and he wound up with that $125,000. In addition, he says Don King would not pay for the transportation of the fighter, which is the regular way these things are done, nor give him any tickets to the fight. This, once again, this, this shows that a handshake agreement isn't worth the paper it's written on. One thing certainly that can't be questioned is Carl Daniels' commitment fighting for that little of a purse. Daniels had almost 180 amateur fights, posting a record of 170 and 8. He's a good professional fighter, never beaten anybody uh, on the level of Hopkins. Uh, lost to, to Terry Norris uh, 10 years ago. The crowd here at the Sovereign Center, got him ready to see the execution of Bernard Hopkins, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. This is a very nice crowd in this brand new arena. Seats about 9,000 plus for an event like this. Looks like there might be around 7,000 or so.
cancer recently, left six children, a wife and six children, and is donating some money to the family.
again, our referee in charge, Frank Campuccino, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing is scheduled. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both giving your instructions. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. I leave it with you. I got it. Bernard Hopkins says that it's not just winning, it's how he wins. He understands the stakes. Because Roy Jones is going to be watching this. And he comes next. Now this Daniel's got not any sweat on his body whatsoever. Hopkins is a little juicy and a little wetness on him, so he stands. It's possible a quick knockout. Here we go, the beginning of round one. Daniel's to Southpaw. Hopkins a conventional fighter. Bernard told us yesterday his game plan isn't so much about worrying about keeping his outside foot outside of Daniel's lead foot, but rather to take the fight up the middle through Daniel's chest. Stop! Break! 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 Daniel's got to make sure he confuses. Make sure that Hopkins thinks, hey, you're not in the ring with your last opponent. I'm somebody different. Confuse him for at least two or three rounds and then get wild with him. Pick up the pace in the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds. If he's got this much second. Hopkins got to make certain he doesn't give this guy any extra courage. Make sure he takes the power early. It's worth mentioning. Daniels has not fought since December of 2000. 13 month layoff, second longest of his career. So part of the problem, the first six months, were promoter problems. Then he says the number one contender, he didn't want to risk getting in the ring with anyone else until he had a shot at Hopkins. Hence, here we are. So far, so good for Daniels. Got Hopkins confused, swinging and missing. No, Make no, him go no, back no, to his stop. old step back, step back. unorthodox step back, style and all of that. Get him confused. You don't want him. He looked like a master boxer the last time. Don't make him look good this time. Daniels comes through with a straight left hand. thing you know you are not getting off the canvas. That's what Hopkins in a real strange position in this game. Well Hopkins told us he knew it was going to be an interesting situation fighting a southpaw. Bernard Hopkins trying to feel his way through here as we come to a close in the first round. Get you back to boxing in just a sec. How about some Super Bowl news? It's the eve of Super Bowl 36 in New Orleans. Although the St. Louis Rams are heavily favored, they see... It's a pretty good shadow boxing in that first round, George. That's what you want to do if you're Daniels. Keep this thing so unorthodox, so you can unnerve Bernard Hopkins. Don't let him hit you with anything. Make him miss a lot. Then you got a fight on your hands. Hopkins, the looping left foot. Then he came back with a low right uppercut. That's the Hopkins you want. Make him start fouling. Show exactly who he is. Don't make him look good. Then he'll get desperate and you can do something. And you 
precise show exactly who he is, George. What is happening here? In his, throughout his whole career, he's not been a master boxer. He's been a guy who likes to hit below the belt, hit behind the back, things of that nature. Bring that out of him, and then you can bring him back to the reality. Look, you're not a master boxer. Make him start slugging, then you all point him. Then go for a knockout in the last two or three rounds if you're still around. And that's what Daniel's going to have to do. And so far, he's done a good job. Make him miss. Optics comes through with a right uppercut. The two exchanging power punches at close range. Optics going to work at the bottom. Oh, Daniel. The pace picking up there in the middle of the second round. Hopkins would like to look good as he did in his last fight. But some make, guys don't let you look good. Right? That's, that's what you want to do. Be the kind of guy who does not make him look good. Make him look raggedy, and then every time he misses, you hit him with two or three shots. Maybe the judges will pick up on him. Come on, come on. Daniels pokes a right uppercut. Daniels with a counter left hook to the head. Daniels got to land something hard to make Hopkins decide that move. Don't be so courageous against him. Make him a little reserved with his power. Got to hit him with something hard. Daniels got to hit him with something hard. All right, stop. Both of them. Both. Stop. Step back. Step back. Step back. Step back. Keep in mind tonight, it's a very special night of boxing here on HBO. A rare opportunity to see two undisputed champions back to back. Right now, let's head down to Miami and Jim Lampley. All right, Fran, while you cover the fight in Reading, Pennsylvania, we are here in the American Airlines Arena, where later this evening, undisputed light heavyweight champion Roy Jones will strut his stuff once again in a mandatory title defense against Len Kelly of Australia. It's been a tumultuous week for Jones, who has unveiled a new rap song, and meanwhile, if you missed the premiere, catch a replay of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel with the Super Bowl tomorrow. What better time to look at sports books and gambling? We'll go behind the scenes to reveal the factors considered in setting the line for a major sports event. And incidentally, the Rams remain 14-point favorites in New Orleans. Real sports, where nothing is out of bounds. So, from Miami, let's go back to the Pennsylvania Dutch country. Two undisputed champions performing on the same evening in separate venues back to Reading. Daniels brought in Tommy Brooks to train him for this fight. Tommy Brooks, formerly with Mike Tyson, Cornell Whitaker, Vander Holyfield, one of the top guys out there. CompuBox power shots in two rounds. Hopkins starting to heat up. 22 of 54, 41%. Daniels, 11 of 25, a 44% clip. Good, good. Now that's what I want. Daniel is starting to be the aggressor. Cautiously being aggressive. He's still making the Hopkins miss. The only thing is, he's got to hit him with something once he makes a miss. Not seeing enough from a counter perspective again. No. And it would be a right on day for him if he can make certain that he makes Hopkins pay for every miss. Oh, shots to the body. And the two now trying to exchange blows and close range. Then we were able to sneak in a couple that time. Hopkins sneaking some in as well. Left to right jab by Daniel, right in the between the defense of Hopkins. Hopkins is doing a good job of going to the body to make certain that this guy can be there every round. That's the only good thing he's doing so far in my book. Hopkins delivers a 
the left hook to the body, and Daniels comes right back, poking through Hopkins to finish. They are in close. Hopkins really doing a good job on the body since he's having trouble reaching the head so far. What a good throw will do. Straight through the defense of Carl Daniels comes Bernard Hopkins. throughout. Oh, Ralphie. Fisherman's friend affects you. All right, let's bring in unofficial ringside scorer Arthur McCanty Singer to see how he has it scored through three. I have it, uh, I have it scored 30 to 27 after, uh, after the third. And, um, Hopkins uh, is, is, is a better in the exchange on the inside, as I see it, and a very, very powerful puncher with that right cross. There you saw evidence of that right cross, busting right through the defense of Paul Daniels, and now Frank Tempatino warning both fighters, keep it clean. Uh, Larry McCanty scored it for two rounds to one for Hopkins. I gave the first to the challenger. I think the challenger did squeeze out to a round two, but he did so much better than last round because he was able to make Hopkins miss, as I've been saying all night, and then counter and hit him with something. You heard Bowie Fisher, Hopkins trainer, in between rounds. Hopkins ripped the left hook to the half. When Hopkins jumped on him, he jumped right into a good straight right hand as well. Bowie oh! Fisher telling Hopkins, you're too far away, get him close. And Bernard listening to his longtime trainer for 13 years. Hopkins is going for power now. He's going one or two shots at a time. He's taking his time to aim good. Standing there, he's not moving his feet nor his head. Can't do that with Hopkins. You've got to move something at all times. All throw punches. Daniel's not going to move. George, do you, do you believe those body shots that Hopkins are starting to have an effect on Daniel's team? No doubt about it. He's been able to put those body punches in there. But look, you've been in training for six weeks. That's not Nothing wrong with getting somebody shot. <laughs> Keep moving. Bernard Hopkins using the right hook this evening pretty much at will.
measure now with that quick half cross, half jab, half hook that he tends to throw. Instructions from Daniel's corner. He's doing everything right, but just not throwing enough punches. So he's not doing everything right. Very hard to accommodate a guy when he's hitting with that kind of power. Because he's laying in some body shot that makes him a slave to throw shots. George, speaking of power, for the copy box, Hopkins landed 64% of those power shots in the fourth round. 16 of 25. And those shots are in that side, and that's where it really counts. It takes your power away, makes your legs weak, and it gets you kind of scared to stay. Stand in front of him and hit him with anything. Daniels not where he wants to be in the corner. And he wisely ties up and gets out. Let him go. Let him go, Carl. Let him out. Let him out. Do you want to get into these exchanges? Don't exchange shots. Do what you're going to do and get out of there if you're dead. Daniel is trying to move, but it seems that he seems to stop right in front of Hopkins. He moves around and then stops, and that's when Hopkins takes advantage and tees off. And that's what happens when you get so many body shots early in a fight. You just can't get away when you want to. Daniel told him to come on, man. I don't think he meant that. Oh, 
all into traps. So Daniel, you better do something quick. You don't want to follow a puncher around and not leave your head. Are you feet? This is where Hopkins is at his best when you follow him a little bit. It's not doing it. this, he did not just come here to survive. Oh, he's taking some hard shots, and he's trying his best to get in for one or two more. As you can see now, he's trying to hide his body. Very hard body shots are starting to pay dividends. Hopkins continues to work the right midsection of Carl Daniels with his black hook. Daniels fights through, though, with a quick one, too. You may see there is a big welt along the left eye of Hopkins. Doesn't look dangerous at this point. Six of the scheduled 12 rounds are in the book. Let's bring in Arthur McCampy Sr. to see how he has a fight score. I have the score of um, Hopkins by a score of 60 to 54 in favor of Hopkins. Uh, Daniels is mainly on the defense, and he's getting trapped in the corners too much, and they have a very, very dangerous place for fighters to be. I think it's a wonderful thing that Daniel has got Hopkins thinking about maybe the side of his face now. He can just tap it a few times. He can change things just a little bit, not a whole lot. Got to get there quick. Because Hopkins is still on the offensive attack. Think about fighting the softball, you gotta make sure you keep your head out of the way. These hit butts can really get mess up things a lot more than even a punch. There's a lot of sound to it, but not a lot of power because he made it a leaping shot. Hopkins did. Daniels was able to get his defense up. But on Hopkins, simply quicker to the punch all night long. Shadow that goes so spot. He's got to lead with his left, just throw the old right hook. All right, stop, stop. Break. Step back, step back, step back. But George, should he be so concerned with that? Oh, you got to have some out of his game. He's got to have something that to concern himself with. He hasn't had anything else to give him any kind of courage, any kind of confidence. That's the only thing he has. I think he should center in on him. Right, left. The crowd here at the 
Sovereign Center certainly getting their money's worth as Bernard Hopkins and Paul Daniels trade big shots. Ralph, <coughs> Ralph, get in here. Did the win, or is he going to really try to hurt Hopkins and perhaps give himself a chance? Well, you heard Daniel trainer Tommy Brooks say, I'm not going to lie to you, you're behind, especially being in his hometown. Now you have to make it a fight. I told him he's going to have to take Hopkins out. That's probably the only opportunity that Hopkins would need of him to start trying to get a little aggressive. He will clean him out. He's in an awkward position now, boxer. He's got such a roll, but he catches Hopkins there, two shots to the head. Setting his defense, but he's not. He is trying to drive in some kind of uppercut with a left hand. But at what point, George, does Carl Daniels need to become more active? I think that he's considered the activity part now. He's just looking for one shot. There it is, one. All night he's got his eye looking at that shot. Man, Hopkins missed there and came back with a counter straight left. Careful when you're fighting a guy like Daniel who fight with his eyes, watching everything. All right, my turn, my turn, my turn, my turn, fellas. Undisputed middleweight champion Bernard Hopkins in complete control here as the eighth round comes to a close. We will see undisputed light heavyweight champion Roy Jones after this fight. And for more on that, let's send it down to Miami, Jim Lampley. And here in Miami, while the crowd in the American Airlines Arena watching Hopkins Daniels on the big screen, Roy Jones has dispensed with watching the middleweight fight and has begun to warm up for his assignment here, a light heavyweight defense against Glenn Kelly. Meanwhile, a programming note on HBO starting March 28th. Look for the return of on-the-record Bob Costas after last season's debut. Look for more of Bob with special guests from the worlds of sports and entertainment. Please note, undisputed champions fighting in separate locales on HBO Sports and perhaps headed toward each other. Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins back to Reading. Blood now coming from the right nostril of Carl Daniels. Daniels is trying to set a trap. Two steps forward, back up, trying to get that left up cut in. Hard, crisp, right shot to the body by Bernard Hockey. Not looking off. That makes him pay for every step. Total punches from CompuBot's punch stacks. Hopkins more than doubling Daniel's output in the landing department, 169 to 82, and Hopkins obviously throwing more, 386 to 215. No, 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 no. Daniel sits and trying to get in position for that uppercut. Okay, I'm telling you, watch that all night. Trouble. 
photo exhibition by the champion, knowing he has a swift operator in front of him, is gradually taking everything out of him. Daniels telling Hopkins to come along, and both fighters down, exchanging artillery. Daniels now talking to Hopkins. I think that's about all he can do. <laughs> Hopkins is throwing so much level. He can't do anything. Five left hooks from Bernard Hopkins. He's come through with more aggression, and he is easily in control. Brunei. This is how Bernard Hopkins got here, eating a lot of opponents you never heard of, some you have heard of, always ready to fight. Always ready to fight, no matter what style, no matter what inspiration is in front of him. Let's bring in Arthur McCanty Sr. to see how he has the fight scored through nine. I have it as a complete shutout. I find that Daniels is fighting a very defensive fight and he's being allowed to be caught in the corners, which is a highly, highly dangerous position to be in. So I have the score at present 90 to 80. The hop starting to use his left jab a little bit. Keeps his hands up. Though he's in control, still not getting too awkward, dropping his hands too much. Back to the basics. And all Hopkins has been a hard, serious, successful fighter his entire career. But just now, starting to get under the limelight, his first million dollar trade was against Keith Holmes. And says it doesn't matter. He's been saving his money all along. He told us yesterday he's just started tipping at restaurants. I'd like to see him in Oscar De La Hoya. That's what I'd like to see. Waiters and waitresses, he used to run when Bernard came into the restaurant. <laughs> The good thing about this, Hopkins has deserted all of his bad tactics. He's really fighting a clean boxing match. He really is. We thought there was potential for some dirty antics, just from the standpoint of the difficulties and the styles. Swift southpaw. He's been a two to four, man. He's fighting like a real champion. Throwing left hand. Jab. Going underneath the hooks. Great right hand. Lead right hand. Dead hooks. Everything you want. Get your hooks fighter tonight. Displaying both quickness and power. Stands on this. In pocket. Yeah, in 
impresses me is that here he is at the age of 37. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Just turned 37. And he still has the motivation to get into supreme condition every time out. is no longer watching, but he might want to take a peek. But on Hopkins is serious. Let's send it down to Jim Anthony. Last year ago, 65, 63. In this town, isn't this fever 65? You don't mess with George. Now his mother told him he is a great, great grandson of Joe Lewis. Uh, judging by how he fights, I would have to question that genealogy. Yeah. He got it. He got put on a good shot. He just didn't have the punching power to keep up Bernard Hopkins. Also, you're right. He fought every minute. Let's take a listen in to see exactly what happened. I feel good. him up a little faster. There you saw it, Carl Daniels shook his head. Tommy Brooks asked him how he felt, and he simply shook his head, no. Tommy Brooks is a merciful guy because he's seen this guy really taking a big, bad beating from Bernard Hopkins, and he wasn't going to get any better. I don't know if I would quit, but jump on the corner to say, I don't want any more. But it was a merciful thing to do. He wasn't going to get any better. Probably he was going to get the worst of it. Oh, the fight was going. All right, George, and now for the official decision, right. let's send it into the ring. Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, upon advice of the corner, this bout has been stopped by a referee in charge, Craig Cappuccino, at the end of round number 10. The winner by way of technical knockout and still the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner, So Bernard Hopkins remains the undisputed middleweight champion, and he did in impressive fashion. Let's take a look at the final punch stat numbers. Hopkins, more than doubling Daniels' landed output, landing at a 45% rate, Daniels at 38%, but throwing just 249 punches. And here's where Bernard Hopkins won this fight. Power shot after power shot to the body. 199. Nearly four times more shots landed by Hopkins than Daniels. Landing at a 56% clip. Very impressive. Larry Merchant is standing by with the winner, undisputed middleweight champ Bernard Hopkins. All right, thank you very much. Bernard, congratulations. What is, you, what is your feeling about setting a new record for successful middleweight championship defenses? It's great, Larry. It's great. It's great because no one can take that away from me. My daughter, which is three years old, can remember that when she 18, when people get to talk about her father. But first, I'd like to thank Roni Pollis, GoldenPollis.com, and Roni Pollis for sponsorship. We don't do like commercials uh, here. Yeah, uh, the check is in the bank. Well, that's their problem, oh, right? That does. <laughs> right. But I'd like to thank them. Uh, you were facing a slick, cute southpaw. You've seen a few hundred of them along the way. Was there, anything di was there anything different about this? How did you go about it? Well, I went about it the same way. They tried to uh, store my will on Carl Daniels, but he was tricky. I mean, South Paul's are tricky. And, you know, Larry, I don't know how I looked until I watched the tape, but I never really looked tremendous with South Paul's because he really didn't come to fight as far as exchanging. But, you know, hopefully I'll have to see another South Paul no time soon. All right. It seems that you decided early on you better break them down to the body systematically. Let's take a look at 
a lot of those body punches and tell us about them. Well, I was out too far a little bit on some of the body shots, but I, I wanted to keep digging right there. The left hook to the body, I worked in camp with it, and wear him down, because I know he was a mover, and he, he covered his face up pretty good, and he gives you the body because he didn't want to get hit upstairs. So I kept all left hooks to the body, and hopefully, you know, put money in the bank and get him laid off. Do you think that this... Golden Palace. Do you think that this performance is the kind of performance that will stand out enough for the boxing media, the boxing public, to put you on top of the rankings of pound-for-pound -pound fighters to demand a rematch and showdown with Roy Jones? As long as I'm a threat, that's all that matters to me. And you know what? I believe Vernon Forrest, my good friend, who beat Shane Mosley, who most media had in front of me, should get the number one spot. But you know what? I like this, Larry. Whatever the public demands they can have, I want RJ, Roy Jones, Pig Raisin, Turtle Raisin, whatever he is, that's who I want to beat, Larry. But if they want to give me pound for pound, or pound for two, or pound for one, great. Come on with it. All right. Let's talk about the, the possible rematch showdown. There are two aspects. One is the money. Roy has stated his light heavyweight championship is on the line. He's been a star for a lot of years. He thinks he deserves more money. What is your response to that? Well, Roy Jones been, Roy Jones been eating a little bit more that much dog food that he was feeding his pit bulls down in Pensacola, and it's starting to show on his brain. Roy Jones haven't done lately in the world of boxing to even consider himself pound for pound or even a superstar. Now, Roy Jones Jr. can't, can't expect to get more than Bernard Hopkins after the tournament. All right, let's talk to you down there, Roy. Roy, give us your response to what you're hearing up here. Uh, I sound like two cats that really don't know what the hell they're talking about to me. Did you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Roy. I said, sound like two cats that don't have an idea what the hell they're talking about to me. So, your stat, your, uh, Roy, when you say you feel you have earned the right to have the bigger share of whatever pot there is, uh, you're going to stand by that? Is that what you're telling us? You damn right. All right. Well, that's a, that's a major problem already, Larry. He's setting the stage right now. You know, only person who can stop this, Larry, is Ross Greenberg and the people at HBO because I'm going to force Ward to get out of boxing or I'm going to expose him as a hypocrite for everybody. Yeah, you do that for me, uh, Bernard. That'd be very nice of you. And you probably take some good English I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hey, Roy, you thought I'd be going by now, but you know what? It's been since 93, baby, and beating Trinidad forced you to fight me. You didn't want Trinidad to fight me because you wanted an easy fight. Where but I'm going to tell you, Roy, I ain't going nowhere. Where do I, I ain't going nowhere unless I get assassinated. Where do I think I'm not going nowhere unless I get assassinated. Where do I think you're going? Uh, hey, Roy, hey. only thing you got to do is tell the world right now that the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters undisputed are going to fight each other at a reasonable, reasonable catch weight, and we'll split 50-50 down the middle, and let's do the fight by Joe. Come on, Roy, time to put up and shut up. How are we going to split 50-50? All right, let's go to that. Roy, let's talk about reasonable catch weight. Uh, he, uh, Bernard weighed 158 for this fight. He's averaged around 158 for his last four or five fights. You weighed 172. You've averaged around 173 for your last four or five fights. Can you cut the difference in the half? You move down around seven pounds, he moves up around seven, or do you demand some other kind of catch weight? You know what? Right now, you know, it's like, I got a guy here in front of me that I ain't looking past right now that's six pounds heavier than me right now. I'm really too big for Bernard Hopkins. I beat Bernard Hopkins before with one hand. I mean, you know, whatever I can do that's feasible, that with the way that I can make, I'll fight that, you know what I'm saying? I it's, it's not like that. With me, it's just that y'all try, try to peep the game like, hey, you beat one fighter that has a name. One fighter. One fighter that has a name. You're telling people, and that's you, it. You, you just said, you, after that, you, you said you figured it. You know what I'm saying? You just, 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 now to the whole wide world and that you're bigger than me and, and, and so by you being bigger than me that should make it easy for you to want to fight you know at the, end, at the end of the day Roy and Bernard I'm bigger than this is going to happen this is going to happen I never said I don't want to you I never said I don't want to make it happen regardless and find a way to make it happen why speak your ass you know I don't care about no fight talk is cheap hey hey I'm the champ I'm the champ I'm right here with the champ world you want to try me for my title you want to try me for my title 64 to 10, who I am? 64, you get your ass up. 
Six to four, you get your ass kicked. Six to four, I kick your ass. 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 Back to ringside. All right, Larry. George, I don't know about you, but after hearing that, I'm ready to see this fight right now. No, no doubt about it. It'll be a really beautiful fight. I think that those guys should split the purse and get it on. We saw Bernard Hopkins tonight systematically break down Carl Daniels with those power shots to the body. He's lost very few rounds over his last four fights. Is he getting better with Inch? Uh, Hopkins is getting better, but you cannot compare Daniels with Roy Jones. Jones Jr. or anyone else in the top uh, uh, middle uh, middleweight division right now. Oscar De La Hoya, uh, uh, Fernando Vargas, these guys, uh, Daniel is not in the same class with them, not in this class room at all. So Hopkins, you think, did a great job, but he did a good job tonight. Okay. We hear <laughs> George Foreman. Larry, glad to see you made it back down here safely. Any final thoughts? Yeah, and that is about Roy Jones's feeling and what we see that his greatest asset is this negativity, this controlled anger that he walks through the world with. A couple of recent examples. A year, year and a half ago, he was pleading with the media to get his name in the headlines so that people would recognize him, so that he would get into that middleweight tournament. Now, he's angry at the media because they don't agree with everything he says or does. Another example, you may remember after his fight with Trinidad, how he praised his new advisor to the skies. Later he gave him his boxing gloves from that, that event. The next thing we knew, he had dumped the advisor, Rudabella, then dumped on him. The result, a $36 million lawsuit. There's another old Pennsylvania Dutch saying we grow old too soon and smart too late. Well, rightly or wrongly, Bernard Hopkins is back in the spotlight getting recognition these days. All right, right now, let's take a look at some upcoming boxing programming. will now turn its attention from the big screen where they've been watching Hopkins to the ring well they'll watch Jones and you know how much motivation Jones has now to look good earlier this week he performed a rap song which has risen to number two on the rap charts at a nightclub here in Miami so surely Roy will appreciate as much as anybody what the uh, HBO original drama series Oz actor Mums has to say about the light heavyweight champion of the world Sometimes you gotta go better. Take a Ginsu through soft butter. Holla at the... <laughs> See, the earth is about sticks and moves. Ebbs and flows. Like how every now and again, you gotta bleed. Snap gotta come out your nose. The tears gotta run. And through all this, skulls gotta be fit with the ego. In order to protect the mind that make them fish do the things that fish will be able to do. Put that. So, things is how they is. Designed to be how they supposed to be. Done how they done. Because to me, life is about boxing the roof. Sticking the moving breeze. <laughs> And however now and again you gotta drop the next man to his knees just so we can eat. 